Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, so we're going to be covering a couple things today. Um, first, sort of like housekeeping thing. Um, I made the decision to change the in-mission test site, where normally I have been t doing uh, Tavuni uh, because of its uh, Kuva farming potential, trying to normalize that. But due to uh, Lewis Prey being released, and it being out for a couple weeks, and more importantly, the activity of the node recently. When I do in-mission tests, or like an example of the damage to expect, um, I'm going to be swapping to the stronger steel path node, and that's just sort of that. Um, so let's go over some brief modding real quick, uh, just to sort of cover that. Um, where normally it would be uh, straight corrosive, the build isn't going to get a little wild or anything. Um, just been messing around with the Venado. Uh, obviously, the faction mod's going to change. Conditioned Overload's the same. Blood Rush is the same. Uh, Weeping Wounds, Organ Strike, Prime Reach is going to be the same. Um, but we will be leaning into uh, the Double Dot. Uh, the meta for dealing with Corrupted is Slash and Toxin. Toxin to bypass the shields of the Corrupted units, Slash to bypass the armor of the Corrupted Grenier units. And obviously, the Corrupted Infested units, who cares? They explode. Um, they're more of a support unit. Obviously, if you're running around smacking stuff... And all of a sudden, you notice your damage goes down to about 10%. Um, start looking for an Ancient, blow it up, you'll get your damage back. So that's just sort of PSA. Um, I'll talk about it more in depth when I do the missions. Uh, but for the third thing, or for the second thing, um, let's talk shit about Slash a bit. Um, due to the nature of modern Warframe's abilities to strip armor and the fact that uh, gas electric is fairly easy to get, um, Slash is no longer the king of the mountain. It's got some steady competition. A lot of the <laughs> other statuses, and I pulled up all of them, um all right so slash this is the one we're normally talking about slash damage deals true damage the main benefit of this absolutely true and it's the reason why it's so popular is because it bypasses armor it's got some problems but they're massively outweighed by the fact that it bypasses armor Grenier are even strong against Slash, and it still doesn't matter. If you look down here, type effectiveness, and you look at these, the cloned flesh, ferret armor, alloy armor, machinery, alloy armor. Um, basically, how if you want to quickly look at this and get an idea really quickly of what you need to be paying attention to, cloned flesh is health pool. So the first line across is the health pool. The next line, when you're looking at this, is the common enemy scaling resistance. So for regular Grenier, it's ferrite armor. Uh, this is where corrosive is strong. Shield is what most corpus units have. Infested flesh um, is what most infested have. Um, so it's either going to be for infested, regular infested health, which is just a health pool, infested flesh, health pool, um, infested sinew is an armor type. Um, this is going to be the couple of enemies that you see running around in the, uh, infested tile sets or the missions that currently have infested on them. I guess if you're including the invasions where their health is yellow. Um, but this is 
mostly Deimos stuff. So not a common enemy, but obviously the Zealots and the Hemocyte if you're going after that. But the final row, you need to consider this as like rare, almost boss-like enemies. So when you click on these machinery, it will literally list the enemies. They are so uncommon. This is really not stuff that spawns a lot in missions. Obviously, for machinery, you got stuff like the roller. But these are so weak, they explode. You, you would never mod for these. And the regulator, you see these a lot on Earth. Um, Mars is where this one's from. But you have like the observer. But you would never mod for these. So, with this, just view it as like a rare enemy. Like when you look at Robotic, the most common enemy on the bosses uh, is going to be like Ambulas, which are like a, what do you call it, like a rare drop. Like they have to be ferried in. This isn't going to be something you're going to be running through the tile set and just run into one. It's going to have to get drop shipped in. Um, Hyena Pack, I guess, is an end mission spawn but you got to go to the place where it goes. Um, Exploiter Orb, obviously you would have to be looking for that. Eidolons, you know how it is. And then you have the Corpus units. These are at least more common. But again, they're rare enough that they actually list them out. And if you notice, a lot of these are like not super common, like the Gox. This is a ship. Um, Corvette, ship, or little small guy, uh, you can hear them, they make weird beeps, they shoot little lasers, um, you know, they're, they're weaker enemies, or they're a single location, but again, it would be more beneficial to, uh, not mod for them, because they're so rare. Or the enemy that has it is so weak, you wouldn't bother modding for it anyway. Uh, maybe the amalgams. If you're doing a lot of Jupiter stuff, um, these can get pretty tanky. This one will explode. Uh, the Satyr or however you pronounce this, is uh, not super tanky, but they can get pretty annoying late game if you're doing, like, Corpus missions. So, pardon me, I had to sneeze. So, the quick way to read it is, bottom row is uh, rare enemies, where they're so rare, they'll literally be listed out. Alloy armor, or the third row, is elite units. These are the guys that kill you generally. Uh, the second row is common uh, enemies. So this is what's going to be like trash mobs. And the first row is health pool. Okay, so we're going to... That's covered. Bottom row, you don't really consider it too much. But due to the nature of current, the current state of Warframe... Um, armor strip is now a helminth ability away, and it's an AOE. And not only that, you have a uh, damage vulnerability, which is a separate multiplier to damage, um, stacks favorably with uh, Banshee sonar, um, and it is an all around good time. So if you're running, if you're a Necros bro, ain't nothing wrong if you don't like the Gloom setup or you're tired of it, of throwing on Caliban's helmet. If you're running a uh, four build, right? Take off Soul Punch. Um, put on Caliban's two. You're good to go. Um, in each instance of damage vulnerability stacks favorably with other instances of damage vulnerability. So if you're running, uh, say, 
you have like a Neja on the squad and like a Caliban, and they're both spamming their abilities, um, they're not going to interfere with each other. So, something to think about. Obviously, Caliban's damage vulnerability is uh, a little bit more spammable. Um, and also hits way more enemies. But uh, you also have, to a lesser extent... Oh man, what's the other one? Um, Equinox. I think it a, has a Helminth damage vulnerability that's... Uh, rest and Rage. Yeah. Speeds the enemies up, makes them uh, take more damage. And it's an AoE with a really quick cast. Sorry, getting some water. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit of shit about Slash. Uh, since damage reduction on the enemies is more easily de dealt with nowadays, um, and full strips are now relatively easy to do, you can run very little power strength on any frame that you can equip Terrify on, and armor's not an issue anymore. God forbid you run range. So the issue is, is the main perk of Slash is getting around armor. But that's not really an issue anymore. You're not reliant on Slash because of the Helminth system and the one or two frames that have armor removal for Slash's perk to kick in. So let's take a quick look at what the actual slack, slash proc tick damage is. Zero, uh, 0.35, so a 35% ratio with no modded damage. Like, say, with heat, the heat damage bonus. So when you mod for heat with, like, a, a 165 prime mod or a 90% mod or, like, a 60-60 mod the heat dot will get stronger that is not the case with slash so it doesn't have that additional scaling now normally this wasn't an issue because you're just trying to murder stuff um but because it also has the addition of point the point three five ratio right for the dot damage based on the modded base damage so basically it's faction damage the base damage of the weapon plus any base damage increases. So this is going to be like your serrations, your hornet strikes, um, your condition overloads are, are going to fit right here. But if you add, what is it? Um, what is it like a Carnus or Buzzkill? This doesn't help your slash damage because it literally doesn't fit into the equation. So if armor isn't an issue, what should you opt for? Well, literally, it's an issue of going shopping. If you don't have to worry about armor, the next best, in terms of generic... Now, this is going to add complexity to your gameplay. And for those of you that have your energy management under control, and you might even excel at it, or you might have mastered it, the next best damage is toxin if you don't have to worry about uh armor anymore and you're willing to strip now that obviously there's a big conditional but if you're running range and you're running terrify this because you can apply this so easily to, with aoe's you don't have to worry especially with like a kuva brahma on a toxin setup you can easily apply huge toxin dots with the, the tenant weapons. So we're going to be looking into that today. So the next thing, you would basically just go shopping and you would look for anything with a higher ratio and toxin is 0 0.5 and will accept and get boosted by modding onto the weapon toxin damage. Or the damage that boosts that element type. So slash damage is 0.35, so it immediately gets knocked off because we don't care about armor. So we now have toxin, which is 
the modded base damage, so condition overload, serrations, hornet strikes, faction damage, which applies to all of them, and this accepts uh, modded damage from mods that you equip onto the weapon. Um, then you have gas, which is the same equation as slash, but is 0.5. It doesn't wait a second to deal damage. So when you hit something and you apply a gas proc, it's like an additional hidden bonus damage. It shows up in the same hit. It doesn't have a separate damage tick on it. You will see... Or it will have a separate damage tick, but if you're looking at the bar moving, it's going to be the same. So you will see if you do 100 damage and you apply a 70 damage uh, gas tick. So you hit the enemy, you apply the gas proc, and you do 100 damage to the enemy, and you're able to generate a 70 damage gas tick. You will see 100 damage from the alpha hit, or the raw damage hit. And then at the same time, you will see a 70 damage gas tick every time you hit that enemy. So what does that mean? The multiplier on this damage is ticks, fire rate, headshot bonuses, faction damage, and the fact that it's a 0.5 ratio on the tick. So if we're not worried about like how strong the dot needs to be because we don't have uh you can't mod for this and boost it through modding onto your weapon in terms of adding heat and gas one of the ways we can make this dot significantly stronger is by dealing more dots so fire rate increases gas damage by increasing your aoe so weapons that deal aoe's fast so high fire rate weapons the Excelltra would be in this category, where the weapon deals has a high fire rate, deals damage in an AoE, hits multiple targets at once, and has multiple instances to trigger it. All increase the effectiveness of gas damage, because every time the status procs, it ticks. And it ticks in an AoE. So these are the ways that we're going to be able to increase this. Heat damage, I love heat damage. Because there, we're with Slash and uh, Electric and um, not Gas, was it Slash, Electric, and Toxin. They each have their own ticks, even though Gas only has 10 at most. With Heat... You get every heat tick, or every heat status tick, grouped in the first half second. So if you can apply one heat status, or one heat status proc, you will get, at one second, a single heat status proc. Um, maybe I need to paint this out, because I think I'm explaining it poorly. So you have your chart. One second, right here. If you apply at zero seconds, the initial hit, one heat status proc. At one second, you will get one heat status proc worth of damage. But if I can put in a bunch of heat status procs, even if I hit it and proc a heat status a fraction of a second before one second, I will then get this amount of time on the final proc is how long it takes to proc. So for each proc, it only takes a second for it to proc. So fire rate is pretty important for burst damage on heat. Because if you can proc enough heat statuses in a second, you will then cash in on that first dot all of the heat statuses that you procced. So whether you proc one in a second or you proc a thousand in a second, they will all proc on the first second. So it's pretty interesting because it has that grouping ability. 
obviously pretty abusable. We've all seen the videos. So th this is one of the benefits of heat. And it also has a damage bonus against uh, infested... What am I trying to remember? I think it's infested in Grenier. Hold on, let me just scroll down. Yeah, infested health pools and Grenier health pools. So if we're stripping armor anyway, and the infested don't really have armor anyway, we're getting a plus 25% bonus. So the fact is, <clears throat> heat is pretty busted. So it's an option. Let's go to electricity. Same damage, uh, same damage as toxin. 0. 0.5, which is still higher than slash. Modded base damage. This is your serrations, hornet strikes, condition overloads. It accepts mods on the weapon for electricity. So if you have a 90 mod, a 165 mod, 6060s, they go here. Faction damage, always love that. And headshot multipliers. So, and this is one, light gas, procs each time you trigger the status, and it procs in an AoE. Now, to distinguish a little bit, um, gas damage lingers, which is an amazing thing. Electricity damage does not. If, if the electricity status on an enemy where you get the, uh, the Tesla coil effect does not. You will get the bonus damage on the headshot, but the Tesla chain, the Tesla coil, will not trigger it. But even according to the wiki, Deadhead and apparently Target Acquired, I knew Deadhead did, uh, Target Acquired will boost the chaining headshot damage. So it can trigger bonus damage, but it won't get the uh, crit on the AoE. And same with gas. But you can get a damage boost on it. So it will effectively increase it. Um, so let's go over some examples. Okay. And we're going to, in the spirit of going with Corrupted... We're going to go with what I've been using to kill Corrupted recently. It's a magnetic new core that's modded for heat and corrosive. Pretty basic. So this is going to give us a baseline. We're going to load up some corrupt, Corrupted Goons. 190, 190 Eximuses. Reasonably tanky. I mean, they're sort of tanky. Nice little 324k dots. So, let's consider that a baseline. Okay. And I know the end effect of this is going to be, wow, things without armor die faster. Yes, and there's ways to accelerate it even more. Now, let's compare it with a gas electric Kuva Nucor. And I'm not running the crit mod or the crit damage mod. I am just using crit chance. Same as before. But I am also not getting the benefit of the 165 mod. So this is not the infested variants. And it's a merciless. So we're gonna full strip. Nobody's got armor. It's actually a little faster. And the other thing is, is that if you're full stripping, one of the things, and the reason why I'm using Caliban, is that he has a pretty accessible full strip. But if you notice the circle that generates, anything that walks into that 
get stripped permanently if you have enough power strength. So it lingers. You can see it. It's still there. It just went away. I'll proc it again. It stays there for 14, 15 seconds, whatever it scales based on duration. But anything that walks into that gets stripped. Pretty nasty combination with a Vauban, if I must say. Drop a Vauban 4 in the middle of that, all of a sudden you have a bunch of stuff dying. And especially with gas builds, it just scales incredibly hard. Anyway. So, because we don't have to deal with defenses, really. And, okay, just for thoroughness, hold on. Um, Roken. Let's see, I need another corpus unit. Here we go. Easy enough. Oh, there's a guardian. Hold on. There we go. First kill is going to be the hardest. All right, so we're getting... 325, okay, a 253 gas proc there at the end. 253k gas proc on an enemy that's stripped. And those were all Eximuses. Um, obviously, they explode once the Guardian Eximus is gone because that's providing AoE damage reduction. Um, so the fact is, if Slash only applies to a single enemy, right? So if you are doing like a heavy attack build, if you can AoE strip and use gas, anything that walks into the dot that's just lingering there after the enemy dies will probably die to it also, especially if it's a quarter mil tick like that. Slash cannot do that. And the other thing is, is that punch through on electricity and, damp and gas is incredibly strong because they'll trigger it off of each other. So we'll take this, drop this guy in, and we will rebalance because we got a lot of gas. And uh, we can do some more. Uh, nine, okay. Two, three, okay. Okay ratio, still over 100%, but more importantly, we have punch through now, okay. Same enemies as last time. We'll strip. And we'll pick on the Guardian first. Because you would prioritize these guys. Whoops, not that one. Alright, it's a Merciless build. So first one's the hardest. Stacking, stacking, stacking. Alright, so we're seeing damage ticks in the thousands, a nice little 32 there at the end, 163, okay, 129, 121. Once the Guardians die, everything else will blow up. So punch through, when you can hit multiple enemies at once, gas gets super strong super quick. Because it deals, when it deals a status tick, it deals a status tick not only to the enemy that you hit initially, but it deals damage in an AoE, especially once you have 10 gas status procs on it. The AoE gets somewhat large. But if you're dealing damage on an AoE hit, so say like, uh, okay, so like I was using the new core, the chains count. So every time gas ticks on the chains, 
I am doing a gas proc to say two or three enemies due to multi shot at one time, which will trigger the gas status effect on all of them, which will cause all of them to deal an AoE, which will deal an AoE each other AoE to each other. So gas gets stronger the longer it's there, the more enemies that it hits. Or not the longer it's there. But it can linger after the, after the enemy dies. It can get stronger based on enemy density. As well as electricity. The more enemies that are near each other, the more, um, the more damage they will take. Based on the number of procs going off at the same time. So, I forget what it's, act what it's actually called. Um, it's not exponential, but it is multiplicative hold on okay so it's it's quadratic okay it's quadratic that what i just did isn't going to make sense to anybody um it's quadratic because if you have one enemy that has a, an AoE on it, and there's six other enemies, you deal seven enemies worth of AoE to six other enemies for each enemy that's in there. So what is it? Uh, seven raised to the sixth times seven? I forget exactly what the equation is. Or seven times six raised to the seventh? I'll have to look that up. Anyway, but you get the idea. Ten enemies deals significantly more damage if you have ten enemies nearby each other. So stacking the AoE has a massively increased damage potential. And if it's gas, you then have, if everything's dying on top of each other, you then have the additional bonus of the enemies that recently died. And as enemies are moving forward, of their AoE gas ticks also applying to your current enemies. So it gets pretty nutty pretty fast. And because nothing has armor, that's the condition on all of this, you gain all of these benefits that Slash purely couldn't provide. It can't do anything that I just said. You would have to hit enemies, you would get reduction because of follow through, um, you would have to mod for Hunter Munitions, um, which would take away from something on your build. Now, obviously, um, you're going to have to mod for Gas and Electric. So, Rivens would play dividends in this, especially if there's Gas innately on the Riven. Because then you could mod heavier into, uh, into Electric and weight it even more. Uh, so, let's talk about weapons that excel at this. Um, the Kuva weapons are going to do amazing. Uh, reason being is, say, like this is uh, a gas electric nucor, and I've been testing this out with Oberon. And uh, Oberon is pretty good with it. Yeah, good enough. That's enough for a full strip. So let's grab some Orokins, Bombards. All right, nobody's got defenses. We'll go back to the new core. Again, it's a merciless build, so the first one's the worst. And they just kind of die in place. So that was a Corrupted Bombard. 220k gas tick. Or 219 there at the end. Let's not round up. It's still a ton of damage. Because it doesn't have armor. Because the thing that destroys these dots is so little of an issue in Modern Warframe. Because it was the armor that killed the damage of these. 
and not necessarily the electric or the uh, shields. It was the armor. And hell, electricity gets bonus against uh, against shields. So it, it ends up being playing back and forth. But if you are capable due to your setup, this is a more quote unquote late game setup. Um, but if you are able to take advantage of regular armor strip and you're able to energy manage, right? You should never be using Slash. I've been using this setup for a bit now, especially on the current uh, Conjunction Survival on Oberon, and murdering with it. Especially because his armor strip is so accessible now. And I haven't even been using Rivens. So let's talk about weapons that excel about it, because I went on a small detour. Uh, beam weapons that I can, can apply lots of ticks really quick to get the uh, status chance up. So if we were to take this off, you would want as much as possible, and you would either do a lethal torrent, right? But you could also do anemic to get the fire rate way up. Um... Actually, I wouldn't do that. My ribbon. That's more for a status. Uh, so maybe anemic or an, a lethal torrent. It's up to you how much you value the fire rate. I'm running velocity right now. Generally, I wasn't then. Um, but I would use lethal torrent and velocity before I would use velocity and anemic agility. Because there's the, the difference in fire rate is just so small when you start stacking those. Um, and the multi-shot would be way too beneficial. It's an extra chance to proc status. Okay, so th the weapons that will benefit the most from this, honestly, is going to be beam weapons with high fire rate. So surprise the new core. Um, the Zacti actually does pretty well with this. Because there's gas on it, so all you have to do is mod for something 60-60, whatever you want, but be able to leave electricity free. Um, so you would want the hanging primary element to be electricity, and then you could use the other one to mod for something else, and just use 60-60s. But make sure electricity is the primary damage type on it. Um, and shotguns. Kuvacom wins at life on this. Uh, let's see. Magnetic heat. I can do it with this. Uh, hold on. Let's make a build. Merciless. Um, gotta spell gas correctly. And the reason why these do so well is because you have the 165 Prime mod. So when you look at it, we have Gas Electric. It's at a decent ratio. So we would mod for Crit. Obviously got Prime Crit. You could even throw in 100 Munitions. Um, but if you can get Tempo, like you're not going to have a Riven like that. Um, but if you have tempo, uh, you can freely mod for faction. If you do not have arcane tempo, you're using fire rate. Okay. So you would use, it's not shotgun spaz, um, barrage. What a ridiculous name. I'm going to go on a small rant. Okay. When you think of barrage, you think of a ship right? Like a pirate ship, like a cannon barrage. Why didn't they call this slam fire? It is actually a technique used for shotguns. Like it's an older reference, but it was where they would take like a pump action shotgun, mildly modify it. So when you load the shell into the chamber and you would load it in with such force 
it would fire as soon as it hit the pin and you would just hold the firing trigger down so the pin was exposed and you would just load the shell in as fast as possible that you could just rapid fire and spray all of the your entire magazine into a trench but they called it shotgun barrage small small bone to pick it sh this should have been slam fire uh, obviously it doesn't make sense on full auto but like the strun that'd be a dope ass mod 200 percent fire rate like minus 50 percent accuracy yeah give me that shit um but anyway so if you don't have um the faction mod you're gonna do fire rate so but we're gonna equip tempo and if i don't have room for tempo on the build I'm going to put fire right back on here, but I'm going to show the corrupted setup with tempo because this is going to be my damage dealer. So we don't mind boosting it. Easy enough. And what is normally seen as a meme, all of a sudden, all the multi-shot that this weapon innately has, all of a sudden turns into a bunch of tiny-ass little uh, dots. Little AoE explosions. Every single time the status is triggered. And the comb's got a ton of multi-shot, so that's a lot of little AoEs going off at once. So the comb wins. Um, and this should just be how you kill going up to level cap. If you can regularly armor strip or you're willing to. Obviously this is increasing complexity. But due to the fact that slash... Like you don't want to use slash against an enemy that's like even a level cap enemy. It would be better to go with a gas electric or a pure viral setup if you are regularly full stripping enemies. Um, the only exception would be, uh, say, like a Demolist, where um, it has damage reduction on it. Like the, not damage attenuation, because they don't have that. Um, what's, actually, or do they? Maybe they changed it. Uh, let's see. Vernier. Demolist. What's the damage reduction they got? They have damage reduction, but I don't think it's damage attenuation. Times innate damage. Okay, so they do have damage attenuation plus an innate damage reduction. Okay, so you would have to deal with it. Um, damage, fire rate, multi-shot. Okay, so you would want to go crit heavy, obviously. Um, but yeah, even with that, faction mods would play a massive benefit. Multi-shot would help out a ton. Tons of crit would help. Um, so even with this, you can dot them to death. Now with Slash, generally with like a heavy attack hit, that's how it gets by. Um, everybody knows the frustration of seeing... Uh, if having like a completely charged up 12x combo and you hit a demolist and it does like 30k damage ticks, right? And you go and you hit another enemy and you hit them for like 300k, right? It's it's the damage reduction. Um, but if you hit them with a heavy attack and then say, uh, like say Arthas, for example, the YouTuber, has been using to great effect heavy attack builds with no attack speed on the weapon but using a uh, relentless combination oh, by the way if you guys haven't checked him out go check that dude out he is abusing the shit out of the relentless combination mod and he's combining it with um what is it it's the hold on i have it on this sickening pulse this allows you to get around damage attenuation. 
Because you'll heavy attack a weapon for a really hard heavy attack for like a single like a single electricity proc or a single toxin proc or a single gas proc. Like it's really effective with electricity and toxin. Um, but this will immediately multiply the heavy attack dot up to 10 and it's really effective on sla uh, on gas cuz it'll multiply it by 10 a heavy attack heat proc will get boosted also so he's been using this so I'll I'll put provide a link in the channel if you guys don't know him though I'm pretty sure most of you do know this guy but this is one of the ways you can get around damage attenuation on dots is with a heavy attack take a relentless combination that was it was pretty slick what he did and then sickening pulse the dot that's the heavy attack dot for like a massive damage multiplier but this is as far as i can tell if you are willing with if you are willing to armor strip regularly there is zero reason to do slash damage anymore unless it's like a demolist where it has damage attenuation built into it let's just call it damage attenuation because it's the damage attenuation formula and then innate damage reduction on top of it which is not the attenuation formula it's like the damage attenuation formula multiplied by the damage reduction on it it's way worse so if you're willing to armor strip you should be using gas electric if you want to use one of them, I would highly recommend using Pure Electric. And just deal with constantly having to build your dot back up, especially with like an AoE weapon. Um, like just to give you an example, another one that does really well uh, is the Exceltra. Um, you would take this off, this off, got Toxin on there. And what do we got? Crit chance. Yeah, I don't think I can do this without. All right, we'll we'll just do it without the crit chance mod. We'll keep the crit chance on the ribbon. So we'll do gas. Okay, we got gas and electric. And we'll swap over to corrupted. Um, I guess we get the crit chance back. Okay, so we got gas and electric. Um, obviously, ideally, but I don't want to rotate the mod slot because I got a couple. Um, you would want the 90 mod for electricity. But let's full strip and get an example of that. This is another one that came way out ahead. Let's see if I even have the ammo to deal with this. The thing that hurts this a lot is the status chance. But you can see the effectiveness of the dots. And the raw damage also. Okay. Ew. Anyway. The Exceltra came out ahead because of the AoE. Um, but obviously the Kuvacomb kills it. So, for your consideration, little bit of a PSA. Um... So just for your consideration, uh, obviously it's more technical. There's a lot more gameplay ro uh, skill rotation that you would have to worry about. But there are rewards to be had. Um, and I'll provide a link to Arthas's channel. His, his channel is doing incredibly well. But anyway, thank you for listening to this. Slash is not the king of the mountain anymore. There's If you can deal with the armor... 
There is literally no reason to not go gas electric right now, especially if you're equipping faction mods also. The, the damage is just too high from uh, gas electric. Anyway, have a good day, everybody. Take it easy. Have a blessed day.